Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this Jesverdy SPS3010H adjustable DC power supply. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So the range on this is from zero to 30 volts and zero to 10 amps. So let's get this open. So here we have a quick start guide and a manual. Here's the power supply, some cords, the power leads. Power cord is around four feet. The leads are around 20 inches. There's some plastic here over the screen. I'll pull that off. So let's take a quick look at the manual. Now you want to read through this so you can understand how to use it properly. I'm not going to cover everything. So here are the features. It says constant voltage and constant current shift mode automatically. Both CV value and CC value can be preset through the encoder, which is convenient to use. Press the output button to activate or exit output of power supply, and the preset voltage value and current value will be displayed once exited output. Once there is a short circuit in the load, the overcurrent protection, short circuit protection will be activated, and the power supply will exit output, and the OCP alarm looks like it flashes. Once the load device is without short circuit, press the output button to restore the output. The setting voltage and current and actual voltage and current are displayed in four digits. It has a low noise cooling fan. It says the CV value and CA value can be stored automatically once the power supply is powered off or shut down. After power on again, the previous stored values will be used. So this shows the operation. This talks about connecting the leads, constant voltage, constant current characteristics, fuse replacement, and product maintenance. So here's the power supply. We have a display with voltage, amps, and watts. We have these rotary encoder knobs to adjust the current and the voltage. You can also press these in. They click. Here's power and output. Then we have three terminals here. We have positive, negative, and ground. And you can put banana plugs in here, or you can loosen these up and detach terminals here or wrap your wires around there. We have vents on the side. We have rubber feet on the bottom. On the back, we have power and that fuse. So let's plug this in the back. I'll plug it into power. I can press the green button to turn it on. And here we have the display. So it's currently set to zero volts and 10 amps. So we can change the voltage. I'll press in on voltage. Each time I press in, it's going to go to the next digit. So if I wanted 10 volts, I could go here and turn that to one. I can also go to the next one and I'll go up to nine and then it will roll over to 10. If I go down here to zero, it does not go below that. So let's set this to 12 volts. We'll set our current to four and a quarter. Now I'll place my leads in here. So here I have an automotive headlamp. I'll clip onto the terminals. I'll hit output. We can see that light up. I'll hit output again and it will turn off. So let's turn that back on. So we can see this is drawing 48 watts. Now let's say I want to turn the voltage down. I can press voltage here. Now you have to be careful if I turn this up on accident, I could set that to 22 volts and blow this out. So to be careful, I'm going to hit this. I'll turn this to zero. And then we'll go to the next number and I'll turn this up to nine. Let's do our output. So now we're at nine volts. I'll do the voltage again. And now I can actually turn this down. So now I'm at one volt, two, three, and I can adjust the voltage on the fly. Just make sure when you're adjusting the voltage on the fly, you know which column you're in and how much voltage the device you have hooked up can take. So we're drawing eight volts, 3.2 amps, and that's 25.6 watts. So this has an overcurrent protection mode, so we can hold down the current button for three seconds, and we're in overcurrent protection mode, so it's set to 11. If we click on this, we can change it. Then to exit out, we'll hold this down for three seconds again. Let's do this here. Let's hit output and we're at 3.22 amps. So we'll hold this down. Okay, so we have that at one amp. We have watts at zero. Now when this stops flashing, we'll just turn this knob and that is on or off. So one is on. Get out of here. Now let's turn the output on. it's automatically shutting off because we're below our threshold. So I'm going to change this back, set it at 10. 
So that's how you set the overcurrent protection. So this also has a mode to turn the output on automatically when you plug it in or turn it on. So I'll hold down the output button. This puts us in OPN mode. So I'll press the output button. That will set it to one. I'll hold it down now. And now I'll turn the power off. Now when I turn the power on, this will be powered. So you can see it sent power to that automatically. So say you have a broken power supply and you want to use this just like you would a wall wart. You can set your voltage, your amps and everything. You can turn that mode on and it will work just like a wall wart or brick style power supply. So that can be useful for working on certain types of projects or repairs. So you can also adjust the brightness here. This is full brightness. You can turn these knobs at the same time when you're not doing another adjustment and you can turn the brightness down. Now this also has a USB port on it, so you can charge devices or power devices with it. So maybe you're working on an Arduino project. Those are often powered with USB or maybe an ESP32. You can power that with this. Now this is going to be independent of the other knobs and controls. So let's try some other devices. Here I have a little flashlight. I'm not sure if it's working. I don't want to throw some batteries in it right now. So it takes three AAAs. So that would be 4.5 volts. So I'll change this to 4.5 and I'll just change our amps to one amp. I'll hook the leads up to the terminals here. So we have negative is on the spring and positive will be on positive. Let's see if I can open this up and just clamp on that whole thing there. Now let's see if this works. So I'll turn the output on and I'll press the button and that side light is working. I'll press it again and this front light is working. So now I know this light is working. Now it might be easier to just throw some batteries in here, but there could be situations where you have devices where you don't have batteries and you want to test them out. You don't want to get batteries if the device is broken. And that's especially true if the batteries in the device are kind of harder to get. Next I have this motor. This is a 12 volt motor. I'm not sure how many amps start at three. So I'll hook this up. Don't know if this works. We'll hit output. And now that motor's spinning. So it's currently drawing 0.113 amps. Now if I put a little bit of a load on it, you can see those amps are going up. Now I can go in here to voltage and I can drop this down. So there's 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, So below two, it's not running at all. If I hold my hand on here, you can see the amps go up. Let's overdrive this a little bit. So, so here we're at 20 volts, 24 volts. So that's really going now. That will burn this up after a while. So let's turn that back on. And it's kind of hard to see on the camera with the light, but there is a little light here that's lit up, and that is the constant voltage light. Because it's in constant voltage mode, it's running at a constant 12 volts. Let me get my multimeter and let's try measuring this. Now this depends upon the accuracy of my meter also. So get this thing running, and we're getting 12 volts on my meter. Let's see if I can prop that up. Let's turn that down. Let's see, let's measure this. So here we're getting 8.56. So my meter is measuring the same as this is saying for output. Let's do some current measuring. So for that, I will go to milliamps and I'll measure in line here. Let's see if I do this right. So we're getting 79, 80 milliamps here and we're getting 80.7 here. I wasn't pressing that super tight, so it was jumping around a lot. So the output on this is matching what I was reading on my meter. So that's the Jezzer-T SPS3010H adjustable DC power supply. I really like how easy this was to use. You have the current and the voltage knob. You can press those buttons to change any of the digits independently. So that makes adjustments quick and easy. I like that you can also have the output turn on automatically. So if you're working on a project that might be powered with a wall transformer, you can simulate that with this power supply. And it also has that USB port on there for charging your phone or maybe powering USB powered projects. So a power supply like this would be great for electronics, 
repair work, just tinkering in general. You can power your circuits or create charge circuits, things like that. They can also be great for learning about electricity. So if you're learning about electronics, it can be nice to be able to dial in the exact voltages and current you want to power your projects so you're not having to rely on batteries and such. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.